Hi traders, I just want to talk to you about high frequency trading again. High frequency trading in the context of a forex pair. This is the Aussie US dollar and traditionally this is a relatively calm, moderate market to trade. Uh, in the early, very early part of the day I bought this low here and but yeah, it whipped, took me out and then in the space of two hours moved this distance. I wouldn't normally expect that in uh, a forex pair like that. I would expect that to you know, perhaps move up to 93.50 or half of that move during the day and then perhaps pick up overnight and then move off the next day. So you know high frequency trading has come to forex as well as stocks so you just got to be it makes life a lot harder if you look at this 15 minute chart this is just one 15 minute amount of whip so that is much harder to trade if you're trying to use a lot of leverage uh, with not too great a risk Okay, so the way around that is to trade with lower leverage and bigger stops. Or, of course, the, by far the best plan is to wait until the initial bar is out of the way, see where it lands, and then just, just buy a pullback. Okay, but just got to be aware of you know, what is going on in these markets at the moment. And because this look is a whole heap of nothing from. Spent 24 hours doing moving sideways, moving sideways. It whips a lot of people out down there at 93.22 area uh, and then storms up to where I anticipated it will go, 94. Okay, so I'm looking for a pullback. Um, may not get a pullback now. Uh, 93.80 would be a great place to get a pullback. I will mark it but uh, I'm not sure we are going to get that pullback but I'll wait okay so let's just look at the dailies so that is where we are with the Aussie US dollar I think if, if the Aussie US breaks that 94.40 I think we'll see 95 and possibly right up here sometime soon so I'm going to have to try my best to buy a pullback, like I said, 93.25 is the best place. Yeah, I'm going to review that actually. Uh, oops. For some reason. Oh, I see. I'm trying to kill um, a pivot. My 9375 is where I would ideally like to get in that, so I'm just going to wait for that. Remind myself what I'm after. And then see if I get that tomorrow. Whoops, I'm going to do that. Okay. Dell. Um, got caught. Yeah, I, I tried to engage this market before the data was out, so I did chip away at my account a little bit. I did make up for it after the data came out. I bought something like um, 785, 790, I think, and took it up to that 900. So tomorrow, a pullback to 850 is a possible area for that one. The pound yen is struggling up here. It's a massive area of resistance. Uh, what data? Let's have a look at what data we've got. Thursday we have UK retail sales looking to be weaker. More Swiss data, including a Swiss rate. Uh, more UK data mid morning. Speaker UK lunchtime, and then weekly US jobs, which are not that great. And fully fed. Hmm. So the pound's going to be interesting tomorrow. If we 
pull back to for the 300 area and 290 area and a hold, we'll do okay. Otherwise, we start breaking under that low, and that is heading lower. We now take away that red bar. It's redundant. Um, Pound US was OK. Uh, that looks that's strong. It's one of the highest closes for a very long time. Well, it's one of the highest closes since uh, August 09. That's a very bullish close. So if you see 9.25 or 9.60, that is a buy. Euro US, well and truly uh, on the up. 5.70 is a pullback, so if we can get to potentially 6.50-700. Euro Yen has not fared so well. It's smack up against a lot of resistance. Weekly pivot and 200. Pound Aussie, which we've been following, that strength of the Aussie has killed that so far. Uh, I would be very interested in that one. If, let me look. We come back to 180 and hold, or I'd be very happy that it dipped lower. As long as it looks as if we're going to hold that, I would be a buyer of that. Let's see if we can get back up to these highs. Uh, what do you guys have talked about? My right, oil. That's three days of lower closes. And we've closed under the 8 EMA, so that looks lower. And 105.25, 105 is most likely the area next. So I would look to short something like 600, 630 in the oil. Um, that's a FTSE, that's okay. I mean, that you know, pull back to 785 is a buy tomorrow if you see it. And commodities, the wheat is looking good. I I'm in this just. If you're not in that, you might want to try 580 to see if that can um, close higher. Not close above the daily eight. That's a bit ominous. Corn doesn't hasn't fared much better. Soybeans stopping bar on a fib support. Uh, I would buy. 14 bucks on the beans, the gold is doing well, a lot of resistance above and swing trade, swing that one uh, LinkedIn uh, I'm in LinkedIn and if you not got that on interested then 16720 is an option Key Energy has done well, JP Morgan this looks good. A lot of resistance up there, but that is you know, if you see 5735, that's an option. And Goldman's, that's doing well. Okay, so not bad. I'll leave it there and uh, see you in the next update.